Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we are still waiting for uh, uh, the candidates. Uh, let them join, and then uh, after uh, at uh, eleven thirty, we'll start sharply. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. So I hope uh, ev uh, everybody is audible. Okay, and so we'll start this webinar. So we got uh, most of the people have been joined. So we are starting with the, uh, uh, the today's webinar, which is uh, infrastructure management using cloud form. So, Hi, good good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sohail Akhtar, uh, working as a senior technical consultant at Prodevans Technology. I am having five uh, five years of experience in IT, and I am certified in cloud forms, Ansible, infrastructure as a service, platform. Uh, RCE and MCSE. So uh, this is brief introduction about myself and the top. So before starting this webinar, uh, I just uh, uh, want to introduce about my organization. Thus, we of uh, Prodevance Technology are the leading Red Hat business technical and training partner of Red Hat. Okay, so uh, we uh, this uh, organization has been established since uh, 2015, and uh, we are working. Uh, so this is the permanent uh, Red Hat solution partner. So this uh, come to the topic. This uh, the today's topic we are presenting for this webinar is infrastructure management using cloud form, uh, sponsored by Crown. Today I am showcasing this how we can manage our infrastructure using cloud forms. That is actually a Red Hat virtualization suit. Uh, I believe that those uh, who have attending this webinar does have a good knowledge on virtualization, but still let me brief a few points about this uh, virtualization. This what is virtualization and uh, uh, why we are using this virtualization and uh, uh, how uh, we can manage the VMs. Okay, so in this virtualization is actually of it's a what it's a basically we are managing it on a, a physical server so on the physical server this is having a layer that's called a, you know, that's called a hypervisor on this hypervisor we are in, uh, deploying uh, vms so uh, starting with the topic this uh, be, uh, starting with the topic, so this is an uh, overview of uh, Red Hat virtualizations. Okay, so Red Hat virtualization, you can see that. So this is uh, a Red Hat virtualization, and this uh, we it is uh, centralized management, automated workload, and engineer to optimize current IT and integrate with future technologies. So in this, this what virtualization is. Virtualization uh, is a technology that allow you to create multiple simulated environment or dedicated resources uh, from a single physical hardware. So in this, uh, this uh, hard, the software which is used in a virtualization uh, that's called basically called a hypervisor. So hypervisor will do what hypervisor will directly connect. It provides the infrastructure for your VMs. The VM which uh, requires basically, uh, if it's comp uh, comp 
uh, comprised with uh, VM and a physical machine like you are using a laptop. So in, in the laptop, what you have, you have a storage, you have a RAM, you have a, a, a access of all means everything, whatever you are using as a physical machine that comes in a VM. So in that VM, you can access, you can uh, uh, end user can use as per their requirement. So here in this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, the VMs is uh, which has the VM relies on the hypervisor that hypervisor ability to separate the machine's resources from hardware and distribute them appropriately. So this, the hypervisor is actually a layer that builds on that is coming on a KVM. Okay, this KVM is actually, uh, this is like, uh, uh, it provides uh, storage, CPU, memory, all these things. So Red Hat virtualization is uh, capable to provide all these facilities. So Red Hat virtualization is actually a open source software, which uh, is a software defined platform that virtualize your Linux and Windows workloads. Okay, so next you can see that here uh, this we are talking about the virtualization. So what we can do with the virtualization. So virtualization, Red Hat virtualization provides you the centralized management for the KVM uh, hypervisor as well uh, as well as compute, network, storage sources, enterprise feature uh, you know, to support mission critical applications, uh, cross uh, portfolio like uh, if you wants to integrate with uh, 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 other uh hype other softwares like uh like a uh, windows and uh, uh like uh, free bsd these things so here this uh red hat virtualization is basically built on rel plus kvm so what this kvm provides kvm provides you the kvm is stands for the kernel based virtual machine which is the base layer of your uh, virtualization. But the problem with the virtualization uh, KVM is, it is coming with the limited number of VMs, means uh, you have some limitations, you cannot uh, provision the VMs beyond that, that we will discuss later. So, the feature, what the feature of this virtualization has. The feature of this virtualization is affordable virtualization, easy to set up and leading performance, easy to use, integrate with anything, easy to manage. So affordable, why it is affordable? Because uh, it has low co lower, to uh, lower total cost of uh, ownership here over here when compared to other uh, virtualization solution and leading performance why because applications apps running on red hat linux with virtualization tends to run faster than other industry hypervisor and we can see there's an integrate you know, integrate with anything yes it is it can integrate with anything so because of this open source, so it can be designed to work with anything, but we also test and certified Red Hat virtualization on a range of servers and hardware. Easy and it is easy to set up. So easy to set up, we can uh, deploy it easily. Uh, help and it help to automate migration from other vendors easy to use why it is easy to use because uh, intuit, uh, 
Intuitive tools help you start with virtualization quickly, even help you automate migration from another vendors. And easy to manage, a single management co uh, component lets you provision new VMs. If you want to you know, provision a new VMs, you can easily provision and you can easily clone it and you can easily clone with your uh, you can provision a vm using a snapshot also so this is how uh, it working so we'll see uh, everything in a demo the how uh, these things works so coming with the architecture uh, what the virtualization is so here you can see there's the components of the virtualization. The components of virtualization here, you can see the red uh, on the blue, you can see a Red Hat virtualization host. Okay, so this host is nothing but a hypervisor where you can see this Red Hat and Microsoft, these two VMs are deployed. So, if you want to access the VM, so how you can access the VM? To access the VMs, we have a driver here called Spice or VNC. Through this tool, we can access the console of your uh, operating system. Okay, so the console access through the use of Spice or VNC. Here you can see this manager, Red Hat Virtualization Manager, what this manager does. Manager is having a management console where the admin can see the complete infrastructure, complete running VMs, everything. Means he can manage storage, he can manage VMs, he can uh, destroy the VMs, he can edit the, uh, he can uh, provision the VMs, okay. So these things will be available in virtualization manager. Now, the thing is that uh, in a virtualization, there is some backends because all the services, whatever the services is running, every services needs some API tools or some portals. So you can see there's a backend. In a backend, what we can use. So here, there is an option for storage domain. So what the storage domain supported in virtualization, we can add the external storages like ISKZ storage, cluster FS, or any other external storage, which is supported by the Red Hat virtualization. We can add them as a domain uh, storage domain. And this is the browser portal. So browser portal is actually uh, in Red Hat virtualization, it has a two portals. One is called the admin portal, you can see here, and one is called the user portal. User portal is nothing but a self-service portal. Okay, so in admin portal, this admin portal is accessible through a web service where the admin can manage, the uh, ma admin can access the virtualization manager and they can he can manage uh, the VMs and infrastructure. This is the web browser portal for user. This is a self-service portal where uh, the user will get the catalog and using the catalog, user can build their VMs. Okay, so here you can see there's a REST API services. So these services are required to integrate uh, with uh, other services, like uh, if you want to integrate with Cloud Forms or any other services. So this API is required to integrate with the different different services. Here, this uh, uh, this is directory services. So here in directory services, you can see this Active Directory, IPA, or uh, Red Hat directory services and uh, Trivilo uh, directory server, uh, which is a product of IBM. So here in this using this service we can uh, do a 
centralized authentication because this uh, red hat virtualization supports a centralized authentication so we can do a centralized uh, authentication like uh, ldap kerberos authentication we can use here <coughs> sorry so in each and whatever uh, like uh, virtualization man uh, red hat virtualization or uh, you have heard about this cloud form so all these uh, technologies having some database so in virtualization the database is managed by the postgres sql by default this is the default or uh, database service provided by the red hat virtualization okay so i hope uh, this uh, architecture is clear to all of you if uh, anybody has any question or any queries uh, please put your questions in the chat no, uh, chat so that uh, once uh, this uh, uh, presentation is finished after finishing the presentation we'll try to uh, uh, response on your questions okay so this is the complete architecture of red hat virtualization next so here you can see uh it's one minute give me one some time so this guy okay so here you can see this uh, virtualization manager how this uh, virtualization manager communicates uh, one minute i'm having one call so uh sorry for the disturbance uh so uh coming with this uh, red hat virtualization manager so red hat virtualization manager is uh you can see this complete architecture how this uh, uh, communication is done in uh, red hat virtualization manager how the admin can access how this uh, user can access this portal so you can see this client is able to log in so through the client machine as an admin i'm able to log into the admin portal and then uh, it is accessible uh, through uh, you can access the uh, Linux shell API uh, data warehouse and API but behind the scene that's if this application is running on the JBoss EAP application so in you know, on on top of that this application is running on so uh, if you wants to communicate with like uh, we want to integrate uh, LDAP with uh, virtualization so this directory services this like uh, we want to come uh, add ad active directory or ldap services so we can integrate this with jboss eap application and this jboss application jboss eap application is connected with the database to manage all the services so and this you can see this database is also communicating with the data warehouse okay so this is the complete and if uh, uh, the client as a ad as a normal user you can access the user portal this user portal is directly accessible with the jboss and whatever that services you want to access like you want to access a uh, uh, linux shell api you, uh, you are accessible here these things are accessible here okay so this is the architecture of your red hat virtualization manager now uh this next is the kvm because in the for the virtualization manager kvm is also have uh, playing some role so in this kvm the architecture of the kvm so you can see this where the kvm exists so here uh is, you can see the server hardware server hardware is your uh, the physical hardware machine where uh, you have we have to deploy the you know, Linux server inside that Linux server we have to deploy KVM that is uh, nothing but a kernel space and on top of that we this is uh, it is having a user space 
where we can deploy QEMU. QEMU is nothing but an emulator that supports to run all the operating system. In the here, that's the operating system is treated as a guest operating system. Okay, so here we have a spice server also uh, uh, to access as we discussed uh, previously. That's a, uh, a spice server. So a spice server is nothing but a, uh, a tool that provides a, a graphical interface or a console to access the console of the operating system. Okay, so here uh, you can see the one of one of the most option is here. That's libboard. Libboard is nothing but a service which is required to run the VMs. If this service is stopped, you cannot access your VMs. VMs should not VMs will not be accessible. Okay, and VDSM VDSM is nothing but the uh, it stands for virtual desktop and server management. So VDSM is actually a database which manages your uh, uh, which manages the info about the virtual machines and the storage. So coming with the Red Hat virtualization host. What is the Red Hat virtualization host? Red Hat virtualization host is nothing but a hypervisor. So hypervisor is uh, Red Hat is coming with a hypervisor. It's a hypervisor. It's a lightweight uh, host which uh, builds on RHEL and uh, it can be deployed via ISO, PXC, USB or Cologne. Like uh, these things, this uh, uh, this uh, deployment is uh, the simple. That's uh, what uh, how this we are deploying this uh, any real operating system. Like you can deploy through a network boot. You can if you have an ISO file, you have just make your pen drive bootable and put the USB and you can install it. So this installation doesn't take much time. This uh, installation uh, is uh, the installation is very easy. You can install it and. It has uh, a writable root file system, so there uh, and uh, uses trimmed down Anaconda installer. That's uh, basically uh, coming with the rel operating system and cockpit administrative console. This cockpit is a very important thing here. So because uh, this cockpit is uh, a graphical interface where uh, it works on the port nine zero nine zero. Uh, using this port, you can access your VM easily. It you can uh, access your uh, you can see the complete hardware, complete information about your operating system or your physical infrastructure. Now the security and services. Security and services are pre-tuned to support virtual machines. Definitely, it has a uh, capability. So here you can see this uh, block diagram of this uh, block diagram of uh, uh, Red Hat virtualization host. So here this physical storage on this physical storage, it is having a boot partition and the host uh, volume group that's uh, LVM. On the on top of that, it is uh, uh, you can see that so you can provision the VMs. And uh, you can provision it uh, on this, uh, on you can take the backup and whatever. So here, that's a Red Hat virtualization host is designed around LVM thin pools and image based, resulting in a lightweight and flexible architecture. Now, coming with the rel node, rel node is nothing but a VMs. Okay, so. Here, that's a full host. Red Hat RV4 supports RHEL 7 as a node. Uses QEMU, KVM, uh, Red Hat virtualization. Larger footprint compared to Red Hat virtualization host. And RHVM manager will configure security and VDSM. Cockpit needs to be manually installed and configured. Okay, so here, you can see this is a physical machine VDSM, which is a database, and the VRG V packages are there. 
on top of that we can install the vms okay so these vms is nothing but a rel node or it may be it is a microsoft os it may be a free bsd os it may be a ubuntu os so these all vms are known as the rel node now coming with the cockpit so cockpit host administration console so cockpit is uh, is uh, included as a part of virtualization host uh, uh, host engine can be added to a rel host used to configure networking storage tuning subscription so subscription is required because uh, uh, the red hat providing all the services based on their subscription and other aspects of the host uh, can be used to metrics you can see the matrices you can troubleshoot and provide command and access to the host yes definitely you can access and this cockpit is basically if you want to access the cockpit though you can have a web console through a web console you can access the cockpit or uh, it works both on http and https so we can deploy this uh, this rhev and uh, in high availability that we will discuss okay so here the next is uh that's deployment option so the deployment now the deployment in comes in uh two ways like one is a standard deployment and one is a host and engine deployment so the deployment so here as you can see that's uh, uh, red hat virtualization manager deployment option so comparing standard with hosted engine so there are two types of deployment one is a standard one is hosted engine so uh standard deployment is very easy easy to customize and uh one of the important thing it doesn't have a high, no high there's no high availability so this is uh, the standard deployment is not a standard for a industry standard it is not a industry standard but as compared to you can see this on hosted engine so hosted engine has a capability for to deploy in high availability reduce hardware footprint less to manage and it is uh, not easy to customize because it is very complex because it is in high availability so this because this host, hosted engine deployment supports high availability so this is the best and this is the best architecture for as a industry standard it supports a standard industry standards also because in this in industry so company doesn't want to lose their data so definitely they have to go with the high availability so uh so coming with this uh, hosted deployment option so hosted deployment options this is uh uh coming with the rel host and the virtualization host deployment so rel host deployment is uh, ability to highly customize per, as per uh, security and business needs as per their requirement and uh, this hosted engine uh, before uh, uh, dealing with the hosted engine let's uh, deal uh, some more points on hosted engine so in hosted engine uh, you have to know this user the deploy uh, the engineer has to deploy which means uh, they have to know about all this means uh, that they, they must have the knowledge of all the tools the required tools okay so this all things has to be done manually but about the hosted engine in hosted engine you don't need to do any customization you can you don't you can just you have a appliance and using that appliance you can build your host and engine because it is coming as an appliance it is a uh, complete ovf file it's a complete pre configured machine that only what you have to do you have to deploy on your hypervisor so here the comparing of rhev m model m deployment this is a hypervisor you can see this uh, this uh, in a previous uh slide you can see this hosted engine on rel and hosted engine uh on uh hosted engine so here you can see 
this physical and virtual appliance so this physical appliance is a uh, this manager is deployed on a physical host so here in a under option you can see this red hat virtualized appliance and virtual machine so here that's a manager is deployed on two machines on one hypervisor there is a hypervisor a hypervisor one and this is a hypervisor two so what is the hosted engine this is a in hosted engine what it will do once if your this uh, data center hypervisor 2 is goes down this hypervisor man uh, this manager is shifted to the under hypervisor but which is not possible in this hypervisor because this manager is deployed on a physical machine so here the standard deployment so in the first in this slide you can see this we have discussed about the standard deployment and its hosted engine so this uh, standard deployment in a standard deployment we are deploying the manager on a physical machine and it doesn't have any hybridity and we have two hypervisor so these two hypervisor is a different in, uh, in this architecture you can get the more capability more uh, uh, space and uh, you can provision more and more uh, VMs, but the important thing is that you, uh, uh, if anything goes down, any machine goes down, or any hypervisor or cluster goes down, your data will be lost. But in self hosted, you cannot face this type of issue. You can see there is a hosted engine and you have a two cluster. Okay, so if anything any hypervisor or any hardware or any hypervisor goes down all that load is shifted to the another cluster so now uh, we have discussed about this uh, architecture so after uh, discussing this architecture this definitely this virtualization has some features so these are the core features of uh, Red Hat virtualization what you can do what uh, it supports so you can see here the live migration H8 uh, virtual machines CPU uh, pinning CP, uh, and uh, RBAC uh, so here this uh, uh, it has a firewall vm templates power management power management all these things so if you have a live migration so live migration in the sense you have you can make uh, the vms uh, you can create the vms in high availability okay and you can see the cpu pinning so cpu means uh, as per your requirement you can use the cpu uh, uh, based on uh, this uh, VM requirement, R, R back and tiered access based uh, browser based management and power management. There is a PCI pass through, so uh, that uh, you can act uh, that uh, when you are pro when you are provisioning the, your VMs. So in that you can uh, pass this option with uh, as a PS, uh, PCI pass through, VM templates USB pass through. It means you can add USB also. Your VM should access the v, uh, USB. Uh, firewall and AC Linux permissions, and it is set uh, using a REST API, and it supports uh, for RHEL and Windows. So it is now to support the RHEL and Windows. Behind the scene, that's the API that we have discussed. Uh, uh, it support uh, means uh, that's on hypervisor. Uh, your Python, Ruby, and Java SDK must be installed. So coming with the advanced feature. So this is the advanced feature of uh, Red Hat virtualization. So host affinity and uh, anti-affinity. So it's a uh, source reservation, resource reservation. So uh, like uh, uh, you can have a uh, flavors. Okay, uh, it can be tiny, it can be small, or uh, it can be uh, uh, large. Okay, and uh, migrate import VM automatic reset. 
if you have if you wants to migrate uh, uh, if you wants to do a migration with the vms that is also possible and if you have the vms with you and uh, uh, if you have a vms in the form of ova file so you can uh, import it and so these things you can do with the vms automated resource management and load balancing so in this uh, uh, red hat virtualization you can uh, overcome it with the memory ballooning means uh, you can uh, use uh, as per the requirements uh, you like you have a 96 gb of ram so uh, you can overcome uh, uh, like uh, you can overcome it okay uh, cpu uh, quality of service memory paging and sharing that is also possible so uh, this is a uh, rel automatic uh, atomic support large page support sir atomic support is uh, rel atomic is an another operating system which is basically uh, supports a container so uh, this is specifically created for the uh, for uh, container services so red hat virtualization also supports this op uh, this uh, rel atomic uh, support all has a rel atomic support now next add a uh, hot add memory and cpu uh, worth uh, specify means if your vm is running you can add more and more memory that is a hot plug uh, you can uh, maxima uh, you can uh, increase your memory size and you can increase the cpu uh, hot unplug cpu uh, import from vm from vmware so if you have running uh, any vms from uh, in other environment like vmware so you can import those vms from uh, vmware to red hat virtualization so uh, coming with the network feature this uh, definitely it has a network feature also in network feature it is having vlan tagging network quality of services nic bonding vm flex support so these uh, these are the uh, uh, the basic uh, support which is provided by the rel uh, we can uh, configure like nic bonding we can configure in simple rel os so this is also supported in virtualization now coming with the storage feature definitely it has a storage feature also in this storage feature you can see this iscsi nfs fc fc stands for five uh fiber uh, channel and posix cluster fs so here this live uh, live migration of uh, storage is also possible through the rest api for backend and restore support and a uh, live snapshot merge and it is having a uh, live snapshot merge it is having thin and thick provisioning uh, thin and thick provisioning is basically a uh, thin provisioning is like suppose we have having uh, a vm which is having a 10 gb of uh, which is uh, having a 10 gb of a storage so uh, and we have a physical disk on a physical disk it is have suppose it is having a 10 no 1 tb okay so this uh, image is having a 10 gb of a space so you know on a physical machine when you check as a thick provisioning it is showing the 10 gb of a space but in thin provisioning you have created a vm with a 10 gb of a space but it will take the spaces as per their requirement it is having like uh, suppose uh, that uh, vm is having a 10 gb of a space 10 gb of a space but uh, your os uh, you have that uh, os is using only 2 gb so it occupies only 2 you know, 2 gb uh, of a physical storage it utilizes only 2 gb of physical storage rather than 10 gb but your uh, your storage is 10 gb now a uh, block discard storage based fencing uh, so if you have a blade server or rack server it is having a fence uh, so through the uh, through that it is having a fencing uh, agents so using that fencing agents you can block and discard uh, the storage so uh, after uh, those features you can see the limit so what is this red hat virtualization 
is having uh the these components and these components based on these components is having some limitations okay so this is the one standard on based on that standard it is having some limits like logical cpu uh, per hypervisor it is using uh, 288 uh, per core per uh, hypervisor it is unlimited you can use as many as you want ram maximum ram it is using 10 t uh, 12 tb VMs per hypervisor, no hard limit. You can uh, create a number of uh, VMs on a hypervisor. Host per cluster. In a single cluster, maximum host, you can add 250, not more than that. VMs per, per cluster, there is no hard limit. You can create as many as you want. Uh, vCPU per VMs, that is maximum is 240, minimum is one. RAM per VM that is 4 TB. Okay, so this is the limit you have uh, means uh, we cannot go beyond this limit. So after this, uh, we are coming with the, uh, uh, the topic uh, virtualization machine. So uh, anybody has any questions so please uh, put your questions on chat so that uh, uh, we'll try to answer will once we'll finish this presentation after finishing this presentation we'll try to uh, respond uh, uh, on your questions okay so uh, virtualization manager so in virtualization manager we have already discussed so this is the management console of this virtualization manager you can see this in uh, the left hand side you can see the dashboard compute network storage administration and event and in this uh, right hand side of top you can see the notification taggings tasks user and one of the help uh, one of the things is the help okay so here you can see uh, this uh, this dashboard having a complete information with the data centers cluster host and data uh, storage domains virtual machines and what the event event is nothing but just like a log you can see what's the error or how much is the result what's it uh, what is the warning okay and what is running perfect which is come in with the flags okay so you can see if you wants to check uh, uh, your vms your utilization this is coming with the graphs this is uh, one of the good uh, and uh, one of the uh, uh, good uh, facility of this virtualization manager you can easily diagnose how much uh, your vms uh, what are the utilizations okay so here uh, this is the top utilization resources and this is comes like uh, here you can see this is storage domain and virtual machines each you can uh, you can uh, see each and every virtual machines so how much they have the utilizations okay so in this green they have this is uh, okay but uh, uh, here as you can see this uh, a capsule is coming in red so this is uh, this it has utilized the, all the resources means where this 1.6 TB has been given to the capsule. So 1.6 TB is completely utilized by the capsule server. So same sim similar fashion, you can see matrix storage and uh, uh, alumni test. Okay, so these are the things uh, that you can easily diagnose your storage. You can see the utilization and it's very good because of this, everything is visible like a graph. So here, uh, this is, uh, uh, you can see the complete uh, VMs. You can see this, uh, this on the left hand side of this list. In the first column, you can see this green uh, triangles. In this green triangles, you can see this, all the VMs are up and running. And some of the VMs you can see with the exclamation marks with the yellow uh, green triangle with this uh, yellow sign. So this means uh, this VM is uh, doesn't have the power management. Uh, this VM requires a power management uh, has to be added. On these 
or the VMs, which is with the uh, with a single triangle, it is coming with it is shown. It is a uh, notification that it doesn't require it uh, already that power management has been configured. Everything is uh, running perfectly. Okay, so here you can see this uh, columns is having a name of the VMs. You can put in a comment on which hypervisor these VMs are running and what the IP address of this uh, this particular VM and what's the FQDN name, uh, so hostname name, and on which cluster it is running, and what's the data center, means uh, what is the data center is running on, how much memory it is using, CPU, network, and uh, what console it is using, what is the status of the VM, and VM is up and running from how long, and you can put your descriptions, okay? So this is uh, the complete information where you can find there's uh, uh, your uh, info about your VMs. Now, uh, this is like uh, if you click on a particular hypervisor. So uh, you can see this is uh, uh, the info of a hypervisor on a single hypervisor. This is how many VMs are running. And if you click on a particular, hype, uh, particular VM, you can see the complete information of your VM. There's a name of the VM description and you can see the console, uh, which operating system, which type of, uh, which flavor of operating, uh, which type of operating system is installed and uh, optimized for desktop and uh, what is the priority of this VM. Okay. And uh, what type of uh, video card it is using and uh, memory. Okay. And uh, CPU utilization, all these things are available here so you can find each and every information you click on uh, the network interfaces you can find we'll see in a demo of uh, uh, all these things okay uh, uh, i'll try uh, uh, my best to uh, show you that so uh, whatever we have shown here so uh, regarding this uh, so virtual red hat virtualization can integrate with the uh, Red Hat virtualization integration. So Red Hat virtualization integration, we can integrate with uh, lots of technologies. Like here, that's we can integrate with cloud forms. We can integrate with uh, OpenStack. We can integrate with satellite. We can integrate it in uh, Ansible. And we can also integrate with the Red Hat cluster storage. Okay, so coming with the cloud forms, cloud form is nothing but a uh, hybrid cloud management platforms where uh, uh, it is given a name cloud form. So uh, definitely it is uh, 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 suitable for the cloud uh, providers, but uh, using uh, you can manage cloud providers uh, with, uh, with that. You can also manage infrastructure and you can manage your container also. So in this cloud forms, cloud form has this uh, facility uh, uh, to, to automate, orchestrate a chargeback facility and compliance security and policy and self-service portal. Okay, so OpenStack, you can integrate with OpenStack also. Uh, so OpenStack has a service of Glance, Neutron. So these services you can utilize in Red Hat virtualization. Satellite. If you want to set, uh, if you have a satellite with, uh, if you want to integrate the virtualization with satellite, you can also integrate. Red Hat, uh, Red Hat satellite has a pro has a uh, capability capability to provision on a bare metal, and you can uh, provide the repository uh, from satellite to your uh, VMs, which is in Red Hat virtualization. And you can automate uh, uh, Red Hat virtualization using Ansible. Ansible, so uh, Ansible can configure virtual machines, virtual network, and we can uh, manage uh, uh, virtual uh, storage, etc. And here, there's a cluster storage. Uh, cluster storage, nothing but a storage which is uh, run in a backend, uh, just like your EMC or uh, you can say uh, you know, Dell storage. We can, uh, in a similar fashion, the cluster storage is also running. So this cluster storage we can access by using uh, ISKS uh, service. Now, the comparison of uh, uh, Red Hat virtualization. So compar uh, compar 
comparison of Red Hat virtualization with uh, vSphere is you can see this uh, uh, user interface. Red Hat virtualization and uh, vCenter has a virtual uh, has a, uh, a UI. So in Red Hat virtualization, you can access the UI using a Red Hat virtualization manager, and in vSphere, you can access by using a vCenter. And uh, uh, as a hypervisor in hy uh, Red Hat virtualization, it is having a uh, hypervisor the host and you can actually you can access the e exercise so this is uh, both is having uh, in this uh, uh, virtualization you can see you can see this live migration is uh, through uh, is live migration is available but in vcenter we need vmotion uh, this is another tool that is required to uh, do a live migration okay so this is and uh, this is the uh, difference between your uh, Red Hat virtualization and vSphere. There's a uh, lots of uh, differences. Now, coming with the main topic, this uh, Red Hat virtualization suite. The Red Hat virtualization suite, nothing but a Red Hat virtualization, including the Red Hat cloud forms. Okay, so Red Hat Cloud Forms is uh, uh, Red Hat Cloud uh, Red Hat virtualization is for enterprise virtualization, and you can perform Red Hat Cloud Forms for aut orchestration and automation. So coming with the Red Hat Cloud Forms, so Cloud Form is nothing but a hybrid cloud management where you can manage your uh, infrastructure, your cloud container, you can manage your public cloud, your private cloud, everything. It has a self-service capability where you can uh, provision the VMs, you can manage, you can uh, uh, ensure compliance across the virtual machines, your virtual machines are compliance or not, that you can test it here. So uh, the definitely cloud forms has some features. This is the evolutionary path for the cloud forms where the cloud form exists. So here you can see the software defined network on top of that is the virtualization is installed or you can install your private cloud that is about the open stack or you can have uh, the public cloud. And on top of that you can manage, you, know, you can manage those things using a container and on uh, to manage all these infrastructure you need a cloud form. So cloud form has a self service management, uh, compliance and governance and efficiency and optimization. So uh, this is a feature of the cloud form. So cloud form is uh, agentless. So it doesn't uh, if you if you have uh, like a virtualization environment, so just you need to integrate just your uh, info, uh, which you need to provide to the cloud forms. So cloud form doesn't require any agent to be installed on that virtualization or uh, your cloud. Uh, I mean, so you, it doesn't require any uh, agent software on a public cloud or a private cloud or a container. Just you need to provide that credential of your uh, public cloud or a container or your virtual infrastructure uh, uh, that uh, is sufficient to access those infra. Ansible automation. So uh, Ansible automation in cloud forms. That's how we can do the Ansible automation because uh, nowadays uh, uh, that cloud form is coming with the embedded Ansible. So we don't need uh, uh, to be installed Ansible to the another machine. Okay. So cloud form itself is coming with the feature where we can write the playbooks, we can deploy, and we can automate. Multi tenancy and RBAC because uh, it's a cloud form is having a multi tenancy so we can create a multiple uh, tenants so we can we can have we can manage the multiple tenants here and it has a rollback access. Continuous discovery and uh, uh, continuous discovery. This is uh, you can manage the Brownfield management Brownfield management and uh, inter uh, interprets with other management like uh, you can manage other uh, uh, other uh, things also so here uh, this uh, virtual appliance this uh, cloud form is coming as a uh, virtual appliance this is a pre-built uh, os it is coming as a ovf file there's a pre-built machine we can say the vm 
uh, this VM, you have to only deploy, you can deploy it on any platform as uh, virtualization, OpenStack, AWS, Azure, uh, Google Cloud, or uh, VMware, anywhere you can deploy and you can make your infra accessible. So uh, uh, this uh, federal global deployment, so you can deploy this uh, uh, cloud form as a high availability this, uh, on multiple regions deployment. So uh, this is the uh, capability of this uh, uh, cloud forms. So agent free virtual machine architecture. So this is coming as a OVF file and uh, web based access it has a web console and a self service admin can this it ha it also has a two uh, two access uh, two types of access one is uh, for ad two portals that's the one is admin portal one is a, a self service portal and uh, enterprise directory support definitely we can uh, it ha we can uh, integrate it with uh, other services like ldap or uh, idm okay for uh, that's all we can integrate it with the AD. Uh, support a multi tenancy, we can, uh, as uh, we have discussed with uh, a multi tenancy, we can uh, in, uh, it supports a multi tenancy also. And uh, horizontally scalable, that's also possible. Uh, and load balancing is also there. And load balancing failover, that's uh, uh, in a high ability, we can deploy this uh, you know, cloud form as a high ability in a high ability architecture. Next is uh, management across multiple locations. So you know, it is uh, the deployment of this uh, cloud form can be done in, in multiple regions and uh, that we can manage with a single console. Uh, management across virtual platform and public cloud. Yes, uh, if you if you integrate your public cloud with the uh, uh, cloud forms, you can uh, definitely you can manage or you can uh, the virtual platform is nothing but uh, infrastructure uh, providers that we can integrate, we can manage. So this is uh, uh, the approach to uh, open hybrid cloud. Okay, so where that's uh, cloud form exists, cloud form exists uh, in a uh, IT provider broker service and your uh, Red Hat virtualization coming as an infrastructure as a service. Now, so uh, this is the flow of your uh, cloud forms, how this uh, cloud form is uh, executing. This is a workflow of the. So here in this, you can see uh, uh, there is uh, two worker nodes and it is having a database uh, for the database cloud form is using a uh, 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 Postgres SQL and it is having uh, here you can uh, see this you can manage uh, uh, open stack you can manage Red Hat uh, virtualization Azure and uh, AWS and VMware so this cloud form is having a chargeback facility so using the chargeback, you can see the utilization, how much you have utilized that if you, uh, as a user, has, uh, uh, what is the, how much uh, resources that the user has utilized. Okay, so here, so here uh, you can see this uh, as how the user is, user is able to log into the cloud form and uh, he can, uh, and uh, as a normal user, he can, uh, the user can access with the self service portal and he can access. So we'll discuss in a demo, we'll show the demo, how this uh, it is working. So efficiency and optimization, that's uh, uh, life cycle management and capacity, root cause analysis, all those things it has. Okay, so performance and capacity, you can see this uh, performance uh, uh, using uh, in a bar, uh, in a chart. So how was the utilization, how much CPU had been utilized and disk and network utilization has been done. Okay, so this is the virtualization management. Uh, like uh, 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 you can see this number of hosts, number of CPU has been uh, consumed. Uh, each and every uh, uh, VMs, and this chart is showing this how many uh, VMs, what uh, how many OS uh, is running on uh, the, uh, uh, the on the hypervisor on the virtualization management platform. 
and uh, this is a public cloud management so public cloud management you can manage aws azure and gcp and in container we can integrate openshift okay so root cause analysis as you can see this uh, uh, you view you, know, you can see the vms you can see the architecture this how the vms are connected and how uh, how the connection is how the vms can uh, communicate with each other you can see uh, this architecture this architecture is defined as uh, your uh, uh, infrastructure uh, uh, architecture so infrastructure management so infrastructure management is nothing but you can manage your infrastructure uh yeah uh, it, there is a uh, uh, practical session is also there okay so uh, let me finish this okay so these are the things that uh, you uh, this uh, policy and compliance policy enforcement enforcement and you can uh, see the quota and chargeback facility here okay so we have a copy of it definitely uh, uh you can uh, uh you will get uh, this uh, uh you will get this copy of uh, this uh, presentation this my team will uh, share with you and uh, service automation challenges okay uh, so this is service uh, if you do a provisioning that's uh, how uh, definitely for a provisioning of vm the people are uh, taking much time okay so with the self service portal you can uh, easily uh, uh, provision we can uh, provision the vms within a, uh, a few minutes so, so this is a self service portal it uh, looks like that and automation so uh, uh, i think uh, this uh, uh, this presentation part is going a little bit lengthier okay so now uh, i'm coming with the uh, uh, demo part so i'll demonstrate you this how this uh, uh, virtualization manager looks like and how this uh, virtualization uh, uh, is working okay so okay so here this is your uh, virtualization manager okay so in virtual virtual virtualization manager i have explained you about uh, the portal that's it has a user portal and it has an admin portal so first i am logging as a simple normal user so here or oh, this i am logging by admin so yeah it is login so this is taking time for the login so you can see the list of vms here so here you can see this is uh, uh, the console okay so this is it doesn't have any vms running okay so here uh, uh, you can create the vms or uh, this is the templates okay and the resources also available okay so it doesn't have anything so i am provisioning a new vm so okay it has uh, some images so i am taking the images l7 instance type i am taking as a uh, small and i'm providing the name of the vm so uh, vm1 vm1 demo vm1 okay and uh, attach image so before attaching an image we have to create a virtual disk so i'm providing the disk size of 10 gb or is provided 20 gb okay this is a, a storage domain where i need to provision the vm 
and it has to be a thin provision and uh, you have to select the bootable because without bootable it won't uh, uh, create a bootable device okay and we need to add the NIC so NIC is overt management and click on OK. So here you can uh, OK. So here you can see this uh, VM is uh, uh, creating. So coming with the uh, portal your virtualization manager advance accept so I'm accessing it It is in progress, let it be complete. Machine is currently down. So start it. So this machine is coming up, the powering up. Okay, so this is the file, this is a you know, VB file. So you, I'm just opening up okay okay so now you can see this uh, my vm is uh, machine is up and running you click on the console open just go to the console.vv file so uh, are you able to see the console please uh, okay not able to see okay I will show I will share the console share the text no. okay so here you can see uh, this is uh, uh, the VM what we have provided with what we have created so I'm trying to log in okay 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 so uh, root okay let it be uh, so uh, this is how you can create the VMs now uh, coming with this uh, coming with this uh, uh, cloud form Okay, so here, just let me log in as an admin to the virtual virtualization manager. So um, first I need to log out. And then log in as a administrator. <sighs> So this is your administrator uh, uh, Red Hat Virtualization Manager where you can see that there, there is a one data center, one cluster, one host, one uh, storage domain 
and there are three uh, virtual machines is up and running. There's a what? The uh, two machines are down and one that we have created. So here you can see the same that's uh, uh, power management is not with this VM. So that's why it is not access. Uh, it does. It is showing this exclamation symbol. Okay. So here uh, you can see uh, if we expand all, you can see this storage. There's a export domain. There is a ISO domain. There is a VM stores domain. This ISO domain, uh, you see the uh, ISO domain here. This ISO domain is uh, uh, having the complete ISOs. This export, whatever uh, there's a VM you wants to, uh, you wants to take a copy of that VM. You can take the backup here, and uh, VM stores whatever VM you are creating that comes under VM store. Okay, and uh, the network which is uh, you can see the what management what MGMT. So this is the management network, which is a default network of uh, uh, the virtualization uh, virtualization. Okay. And uh, this is cluster. This is a cluster is having a default cluster in that default cluster. It is having host. This host is having one uh, uh, hypervisor, uh, one manager. Okay. Uh, sorry, one hypervisor. That's the kvm.example.com. Okay. So this is uh, the hypervisor here. So here you can see this is a one virtual machine. Here I am creating one virtual machine using this uh, using virtualization uh, using this uh, virtualization manager. You can create. You can so this is Linux. Type is small and uh, demo two. Create new disk. This is 20 GB. Already we are using that image, so we don't. So here, over manager coming with the console. Okay, fine. Everything is okay. Yeah. Advanced option. This is the advanced option. So in advanced option, we can set, you can customize your uh, memory size. Okay. Console, what console it will use. Host availability, we, on which host it will run. Here is a, there is a single host. So if we have a multiple host, we have a multiple hypervisor, you can add, add it here. This is a resource allocation. That's a CPU profile. You can choose a CPU uh, and you can use uh, if you wants to share that uh, use a shared CPU. You can use a shared CPU. How, what's the type of provisioning you, know, you need? Boot options. How this uh, system will boot? What, what should be the first device? As the same what we are choosing with the uh, uh, buyers. This uh, custom property. If you have any V host uh, running, like uh, uh, this is uh, for uh, nested virtualization. If you have enabled a nested virtualization on a hypervisor, you can uh, use a V host. So icon, you can add an icon here. And uh, this is uh, if you have satellite running, if you have integrated satellite, so you can uh, choose the satellite for uh, subscription. Okay. So let it be run. It will complete. So So here just do a refresh. So a number of virtual machine is increased. 
okay so this is virtual machine this is we need to click on run so it will come up So uh, when I open this, you can see uh, the details of your VM. What's the name of your VM? What graphical protocol it is using? How much memory? Okay, so these things and what network source, resource it is using? What are the disks? Okay. Now, I have created a VM. Uh, that's uh, VM1. Yes, why not? It is uh, possible. Okay, so using uh, Python uh, via scripting or Python. So Python, I don't have a, a, the idea about the Python, but yeah, using Python, you can do that. Okay. Here, uh, using a scripting also. Uh, you, uh, if you have a shell script, you can uh, you can do that. So here, what I will do, I'll show you that's provisioning through a cloud form. Okay. So here, uh, I'm using this console. Okay. Um, let me log into this. Let me log in to the self-service portal. Okay. So in a self-service portal, you can see the multiple catalog because uh, uh, this is a part of automation. So here, uh, that's uh, I told you about this uh, uh, cloud form has a chargeback facility. User is able to see that's how much they have utilized the resources. So as per their resources, as per the utilization of their resources, they are able to see the how much they need to pay. So here you can see this charge in a dollar. Okay. So if you Okay, so here Here you can see the services the 97 services are running Okay and how much the user has ordered and how many services uh, this is the service catalog uh, let it come because uh, the number of vms is many so it is taking time uh, let it uh, uh, come up uh, in between uh, anybody has any question so uh, they can raise hand and uh, uh, they can ask. Okay, so here you can see that's a service catalog. It is taking lots of time for loading. Yeah, so here you can see this uh, some of the coming with the question marks. Some are green, some are red. Red means there's a VM are there, but it is uh, uh, stopped. In the green, the VM is up and running. This question mark, this VMs are not provisioned. Okay, 
So here, uh, if you click on the service catalog, you can see the service catalog here. So user is using the service catalog. The end user is able to provision their self. So oh, this has a very slow connection. So that's why this is an issue. Okay, so let's wait for this. Uh, let it become so in between uh, uh, let's have a look with the admin portal of uh, cloud forms okay so if you want to add your infrastructure uh, to the cloud form just go to the infrastructure and you can see this provider here okay so this uh, provider you can see this uh, the red hat virtualization hyper v open stack director and vmware so these are the providers uh, we are having, okay? So if you click on the virtualization manager, you are able to see the number of VMs, number of hosts, and complete information about your virtualization manager. Okay, so here also you are able to see the utilization of your CPU, your memory, and the, uh, this cluster uh, utilization is not available here, so it is not showing. So you know, we can, uh, it needs some uh, you know, credential of this cluster utilization if you have any cluster. Uh, there are nine templates. There are 47 VMs are running and uh, five data stores and three hosts. Okay, so you can see this 47 VMs here. So 40, 47 VMs, these VMs are all direct VMs. These are all VMs are running here. Okay, so this is your virtualization, and this is called automation. Here you can manage everything on a single platform. Okay, so uh, let's have a look with the. Uh, it's still taking time. So in, uh, yeah, so this is how your uh, service catalog looks like. So here that's, you can see this uh, service catalog is there. There's a lot of service catalog, user VMware, AWS. So all service catalog are automated service catalog. This service catalog is created with the use of Ansible playbook. Okay, here's also Ansible playbook uh, as uh, Ansible is integrated with this cloud form. So using this Ansible playbook, this playbook has been, uh, this uh, service catalog has been created. Whenever you are, uh, uh, you are deploying, you want to deploy any VM. So what it will do, it will just go to the cloud form. It will trigger the playbook and the playbook will execute through your Ansible tower and the VM deployment should be done in virtualization manager, in Red Hat virtualization, okay? So I'll show you the demo of this virtualization deployment. So after this virtualization deployment, uh, we will uh, end up Okay, so there are total 24 catalogs is there. So here, this you can see the Red Hat Virtualization Manager, uh, uh, real VM provisioning. So here, the service name is real service. You want to, or where you want to deploy on development, production, or test environment, it, you, know, you can choose. Uh, just give a VM name. The so VM name I am giving demo CFMERHP. Number of CPU, how many number of CPU you need. I need only one CPU and memory, how much memory you want. I'm providing the four GB of memory. The function of this uh, application is I want to deploy the web server. Okay, so add to shopping cart, just like a flip cart, you can access, you can provision the VMs and you can see in this uh, cart, that's provisioning 
uh, how to provision. So I there is a, somebody has provisioned this VM before, so I don't need to provision this VM. So I'm deleting that one. Okay, and uh, I want to provision. So just place your order and wait for a few minutes. Your provision, your VM will be provisioned to the virtualization manager. <coughs> Once this provision is done this vm will be visible in your virtualization manager so uh here the shopping uh, you can see this alert the shopping cart successfully done so uh here uh to see the service this uh, self uh, in this is the self-service portal so end user doesn't aware about that so what's going uh going on behind the scene so uh the admin can see this uh, in service and you can see in a request the admin can see each and everything is uh, that's what what this user what the behind the scene is going on okay so i have just gone to the admin portal and then the service i clicked on request wait for a minute you can see that the status of this vm is in pending state and it is the service template is provisioning request created on the cfme which is on region 10 which is a production server or uh, sorry it's a development server okay so it is waiting for the approval once it is approved that vm will be provisioned automatically you don't need to do anything this template is already available in red hat virtualization and using that template vm will be provisioned soon okay so let's have a ref uh, do a refresh uh, to see the next step So any question? So uh, we are definitely, we have uh, taken the time uh, more than the as expected. Okay, so anybody has any question, any queries, uh, uh, please put on chat and uh, any question? So let's wait for the approval. Uh, in between, uh, we will just have a, a query session. Uh, let's. So once your uh, VM is provisioned, it will. Uh, you can see this in a service. It should looks like there's a 79 VM. So once the VM is provisioned, it will count. Uh, the count will be 80, and. In a similar fashion, like uh, here, this uh, you can see this uh, rel seven on AWS. If you uh, if you click here, uh, you click here, you can see this demo VM is there. You can click on the access uh, web console. So one console is available here, and you are able to access your VM. Okay, so wind up today. Uh, yeah, so uh, any uh, queries? This is uh, the last uh, demo that uh, we are trying to show you. Okay, so. Okay, this VM is status is retired. Uh, sorry, this VM will not work because this is retired one. Okay, so let's check that's what's happened with the provision VMs. Still waiting for the approval. It will take some time for the approval. Hmm. So let's. 
So here I have approved it manually because it is not approving automatically. So I have approved manually. Manually approved. Submit. Okay, so here you can see the status is green and the status is okay. And the reason is manually approved. So this is how you can uh, provision and uh, this will be visible in your cell service portal. Okay, so yes, uh, this is possible. Uh, uh, this is one of the guys have questions that uh, how can set the auto renewal for the VM subscription is it is possible to avoid the VM retirement. Yeah, this is uh, I, uh, this is uh, you can see this uh, VM. This is the one of the case that I found this uh, VM is the actually provision and it is retired. So here you can uh, set the VM retirement for never and uh, you can uh, 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 you can uh, subscribe you can do the subscription using the uh, uh, satellite so we can integrate the satellite and we can do this provisioning okay so here you can see the provisional request is approved okay user is able to see this uh, uh, approved and uh, within a few uh, minutes uh, this vm will be provisioned okay so uh, your question is for auto renewal. This auto renewal is possible only through the satellite server. Uh, Satish, I hope that's a question uh, that I am able to answer your query. Uh, guys, if you have any other queries, please ask uh, because this is the last demo. Uh, in between, that's uh, we'll try to answer of your queries. So here you can see this on an admin portal of cloud forms. This approved and it is running. Okay. Yeah. Any question? Please. Uh, yeah, so uh, Satish, this, uh, is uh, this auto approval or any manual intervention required? So it depends on the scenario. That's uh, what uh, the requirement is. Okay, so you, know, you can uh, uh, do because uh, uh, this auto approval is by default feature. Uh, it is uh, it will approve Mac uh, this in cloud form. Uh, the auto approval is maximum max to maximum for two VMs. Okay, so it depends on uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, you have to set uh, some policies and some rules that you have to write. Okay, so uh, the, yeah, this is also possible. Depends on the uh, policy by uh, admin. Yeah, can we integrate with the request ticket tool? Yes, uh, we can integrate. Uh, here you can uh, see uh, this. Uh, I'm just clicking on this one of the VM. Uh, we can integrate uh, with uh, uh, service now. Service now, which is one of the ticketing tool that we can integrate. Uh, that I have did personally. Okay, so I know the steps and how to integrate. That you can integrate just you need to create a button for each and uh, button and using a button you can integrate yeah uh, thanks uh, any other queries okay so uh, this is taking this is the infra issue So, uh, yeah, uh, any query because uh, 
uh, this is uh, there is this infra is having some issue so that's why it is taking much time okay so Okay, so any question? So, uh, guys, uh, so huh? okay. So, uh, if anybody has has any questions, we'll wait for five minutes and uh, uh, ask for questions. Otherwise, uh, we'll uh, end the session. Okay. Uh, so, thanks for you joining. Thanks for your patience. Uh, so I hope uh, you people like the uh, demo. You have liked the uh, uh, you are, you have seen this how to manage this, uh, manage the infrastructure uh, using the cloud forms. So thanks for your joining. Thanks uh, uh, for uh, patience. Okay, thank you. Thanks everyone.